All right, guys, we're in the last part of stereoisomers, and I'd like to look at this molecule here. This is 1,2-dimethylcyclopentane. We've got two chiral centers marked here, and there are possibilities of different spatial arrangements of this, in other words, stereoisomers. So I've got, um, I've got a possibility of this being up or this being down, or we could have one of each. Let's draw those in. Now, cis and trans is an example of what we call geometric isomers. Uh, what we were looking at before are optical isomers, which aren't necessarily cis or trans. Um, when we look at these, we might want to look for pairs that are mirror images of each other, so we can later identify if they're enantiomers. So I think you guys can see that if one looked into a mirror, it would see number two. One thing you could do is lift this up, put it on top of one, and see that they are looking at each other. So one and two are possible in antumers, but we'll check it out and see. Three and four would be mirror images of each other as well. So at this chiral carbon, it's looking in a mirror and it's seeing the opposite, seeing its opposite looking at itself. So this is three and four. So we have a possibility of these pairs of mirror images uh, being enantiomers. Now think back to which of these molecules might be chiral or achiral. Remember, if a molecule has chiral centers, it's likely it could be chiral, but it could also be achiral if it has an internal mirror plane of symmetry. Do you guys see any of these molecules and whether they have an internal mirror plane? So hopefully you guys see that in one and two, we have an internal mirror plane. That means if I slice through this molecule, the left side would see its right side in a mirror. And same here. And in fact, if you just rotated this molecule, you'd be able to superimpose it on top of this one. So these two aren't truly in antumers, they're actually identical. And that is a consequence of there being a chiral overall, even though they have chiral centers. So do you remember the name for the kind of compound? that we said had chiral centers, but because of an internal mirror plane, they were achiral. That would be called meso. So these are a clear example of a meso compound. So one and two are actually the same compound. Three and four, however, is not. You cannot draw a mirror plane within this molecule. And they're mirror images, but if you try to flip this one and superimpose it on here, it just won't work. You could take it as is and try to superimpose it. It won't fit over it. So these two are unique from each other. They're called enantiomers. Now what's the relationship of this one to this one or this one to this one? So we said these two were enantiomers of each other, but what's the relationship of either one of these to this one over here? Well, these are not mirror images of each other and these are not air mirror images of each other. But there's clearly a relationship because their connectivity is the same. They're both, they're all 1,2-dimethyl cyclopentanes. So the name that we would give then is that they are diastereomers of each other. So stereoisomers one slash two, because uh, they're the same thing, and three are diastereomers, and so are one, two, and four, okay, and the rest doesn't apply there. So this one and this one, these are diastereomers. This one and that one, they are diastereomers as well. Now that word is a little hard to say for some people, so diastereomer, and I have heard people call them disastermers because uh, sort of a disaster uh, trying to uh, remember what that means, but um, Diastereomer are simply stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. They're not mirror images that are non-superimposable, but they are some other type of non-superimposable stereoisomer. So in this example, um, I'm using a cis-trans diastereomers. So if you see a cis and a trans version or stereoisomers, they are examples of diastereomers. And thinking back to our, I'll draw it in the margin here, cis and trans 2-butene, for example, here's trans, here's cis, 
they are clearly stereoisomers in the sense that their connectivity is the same, but their 3D spatial arrangement is different. But they're not mirror images of each other. If cis looks into a mirror, it doesn't see trans. So they're not enantiomers, so the only term left then is to call them diastereomer. Elsewhere, you may hear that they're called geometric isomers as well. So that might be a term or structural. Well, structural is too generic. So geometric isomer or cis-trans stereoisomers or diastereomer. Now, usually we also see diastereomers when we have two chiral carbons. Uh, and let me show you an example of where else we see diastereomers cropping up. So let's take this molecule here on my left. Uh, it's an aldehyde, and it's got two chiral centers. Now, there's a type of projection named after Emil Fischer, who's a very famous um, carbohydrate chemist. And with carbohydrates, there's a lot of stereochemistry. So if we took this molecule and we just rotated around this bond, let's flip this methyl group. Instead of being a zigzag, let's make it sort of like a U. Okay, so here's that backbone, like a U right here. I'll highlight it for you. So instead of a zigzag, we have a U. Okay, so it's folding on itself. And the consequence is that these groups on it change as you do that rotation. We kept this constant, so that's the same. But when we s rotate this group up, then this whole thing rotates. And so we now see OH in the back and H in the front. Now let's picture that you're like a car mechanic, you know, you're underneath the car here. And so here's your face and you're looking at this molecule. You're lying down underneath this molecule. What would you see if I then took this picture and I have the backbone folding on itself right there? So this is equivalent to this. If you're lying down, you just see it as a straight line. Where would you see the OH group and the H group if your face is looking up at it? Well, I think I would see if the OH was here and I was lying underneath like this, you know, I'd see it on my right side. So here it is right here. So this OH is on my right side and this H is on my left side. And then if I'm also looking down below, I see this is now on my left side and this is on my right side. Okay, so this helps me simplify the picture into seeing left and right instead of seeing up, forward and back and, you know, left and right and all the directions. It just helps to simplify things. So this is very helpful because even though I have to figure out how to get there, sometimes that's not easy. Um, I can see clearly that this carbon here has one, two, three, four different groups on it. So this is a chiral center. I can see the same thing here, four different groups. And I can also do my R and S very easily. Let me show you that. If I do R and S on this chiral carbon, I have one because of the oxygen, two because this is going to be on with an oxygen, two oxygens actually, right? Because double bond is split up into two single bonds for uh, Kahn Ingold prelog rules. This carbon and then an oxygen. So they sort of tie, but then this is considered having two oxygens, really. So this one wins. So we had one, two, and then this group will be three, and my four will be hydrogen. So one, two, three, it's going counterclockwise, so we would think it was S. Now one thing, though, with Fisher is that the groups that are left and right, or horizontal, they are like right in front of your face, so they are pointing out at you. So one thing that I do is I just point these guys out at me. It looks like a bow tie, like this molecule's wearing a bow tie. So in fact, with a bow tie then, if H is sticking right out in front of me, then my one, two, and three is with four in the front. Okay, so four in the front means I have to reverse my direction. So this is actually, looked like S at first, but now it's R because this is in the front. All right. Why don't we try this one down here? So OH gets one, then this carbon versus this one, this one's two, this one's three, and H is here. One, two, three, that looks like R, but four is in the front. So I have to switch it to S. 
Now we're going to come back to that because it's really nice. Once you figure that out, you can figure out all of these. This one we said was R. This one we said is S. Now, one thing that Fisher is nice for is you once you have this, you can then change it to all the possible configurations. So instead of um, OH on the right here, let's say it's looking into a mirror, what does it see? We can quickly do its enantiomer, just like this. This is the mirror image of this. All right, what other possibilities do we have? And if this is looking into a mirror and it sees the reverse, then this R center becomes an S and this S becomes an R. So we call that inversion of its chiral center. R becomes S, S becomes R. When they're all inverted, then we have its enantiomer. Let's look at the other possible stereoisomers we can get. Instead of the OHs being one on each side like this, which is what we started with, what if we actually have it on the same side? So like that. So instead of one on each here and here, let's have them on the same side. Then when we look into a mirror, our enantiomer of this would be this. Now just be careful because it looks like there's an internal mirror plane of symmetry, but this group is different from that group, so there is no internal mirror plane. But if these two groups on the ends were identical, then we could slice it through this way and it would be a meso compound. So just be aware of those kinds of things. Now I know when OH is on the right and H is on the left, it looks like this. I can say this is R. I don't have to do that again. And over here, this was S, so this is R. And then over here, this looks like this one, so this is S. And this looks like this. Nope, this looks like this. Nope. <laughs> this looks like that, so this is S. And also, this is the enantiomer of this, so R, R becomes S, S. So first, I'd like you to point out which two pairs are enantiomers. Let's write that in. And now I'd like to ask you this question. What's the relationship of this to this? Are they enantiomers? And the answer is no. They're not mirror images of each other. You can see when H looks into a mirror, it sees H. But when OH down here looks into a mirror, it sees OH. So this part of the molecule looks almost like a mirror image, but then this part doesn't. So when you have a mix and match like that, they're still stereoisomers of each other. They still have the same connectivity, but um, they're not mere images of each other. So that is where I would use the term diastereomer. And you can see any mix and match of that. So um, this one and this one are diastereomers. This one and that one are diastereomers. These guys are diastereomers and these guys are diastereomers. Okay, so notice um, if you have two chiral centers here and they're both inverted, or two chiral centers here and they're both inverted, you have the enantiomer. But when you have one chiral center inverted and the other not, or you have some kind of you know partial inversion, you're likely to get diastereomers in that case. And then caveat is just check and make sure there's no internal mirror plane when you do this, because if there was, then it wouldn't be stereoisomers, it would be the same molecule. So to practice from our textbook here, you can see um, given two molecules, you should be able to tell, are they enantiomers, diastereomers, identical, or none of the above? Meaning they could be constitutional isomers or they could have completely different chemical formulas. Uh, just to recap what we did, we looked at Fisher projections and you could tell that this one is the same but this one is inverted. Since they're not all completely inverted, what's the proper term here? 
this would be an example of a diastereomeric pair. All right, so I'd like you guys to go through and as you practice this, try to identify if any of these terms fit. Um, and then also reminder about conformational isomers or conformers or the same molecule. And then also you went over constitutional isomers. So for example, 1,2-dimethylcyclopentane versus 1,3-dimethylcyclopentane. So be aware of that, constitutional isomers. And if you see meso, remember they're the same molecule then. All right, so good luck with that and let's come back and check our answers. All right, you're back. Okay, guys, now we're back. Um, these are pairs of diastereomers. Um, we went over that. Um, we have retention here, but inversion here. Um, here we have retention, but here is inversion. So this is diastereomer as well. Here we have um, enantiomers. Um, this configuration is reversed here as well as this here. And there is no internal mirror plane, so they're not the same molecule. If I take this one and put it on top of this one, they don't fit together. This does have an internal mirror plane, so even though these are chiral carbons here, this is what we call meso, so they're actually the same compound. And you can tell if you rotate this one that it'll fit on top of that one. Here, these are mirror images. Uh, and if I rotate that around, uh, it won't fit on top of that one. So these are enantiomers. This one is meso, this one is not. Um, these are stereoisomers of each other, but they're not mirror images of each other. So they're diastereomers. These are enantiomers because every chiral carbon is inverted and they do not superimpose. Um, and you can tell if we tried to superimpose them by flipping it, these groups would end up down here. With this one, if I redraw this one by flipping it, I would get this. And so we have inversion here, but not down here. So they're diastereomers. Um, here, these are inverted here as well as here. So we've got enantiomers here. If I, rot if I rotated it or flipped it, and you could see that there's actually the same. Uh, and this side, you could also see mirror plane of symmetry as well, if we slice down this way. So these are the same thing. Uh, here, we've got enantiomers, because two chiral carbons here are inverted. And if you flipped one, it would not superimpose on the other. And my last example is a cis-trans decalin. So this is um, cis and trans, which are examples of a pair of diastereomers. All right, this is often um, not so straightforward for most people. So please do practice it, and I'll have some practice um, online as well.